So you guys may have already heard about this because this happened a couple days ago. But there was big news from the world of organized crime, man. And uh, if you guys haven't seen the other videos I've done as far as updates on the mafia, I've been doing a few of those uh, over the past few months on the channel. Uh, the last one I did on the death of a, of a famous mobster was Nick Calabrese a few months ago. He was a Chicago guy, a Chicago outfit guy. But this time we got a guy from New York. And this is a former Bonanno crime family boss, Joe Messino. Uh, Joseph Big Joey was his nickname. He was the first head of one of the New York uh, five families to become a witness to, to snitch on them. You know, they had plenty of snitches, but this guy was like, a boss, you know, a boss of bosses, like the head of the, the head of the family. So, you know, I've said in other videos on the mafia, man, that I really feel like the main thing that took them down was snitching and the surveillance and the technology that the FBI has and stuff that helped, but snitching, once that code of Omerta got broken, it was like everybody just started doing it. You guys know the old saying, man, there's no honor among thieves. Some kids who are thinking about getting into these gangs, man. It'll be your own homies. And this is not just the case with the mafia. It's the case with every gang and, and a lot of the leaders too. So anyways, he died earlier this month after battling a short illness. And uh, that was revealed on Friday. He was 80 years old. So he ran the Bonanno family from 1991 to 2003. And this was being reported by a lot of different media outlets. Uh, apparently he was at a rehab facility. I didn't know that. Uh, this was in the New York City area. And his death happened on September 14th. So he used to be the mob boss. He wasn't the mob boss anymore at the time of his death. But he became a, uh, a witness for the government. This was like, it was like the biggest news in organized crime. Like maybe, maybe of that whole generation. Because it's like the boss is turning now. And uh, he was a federal witness. This wasn't for the state. This happened about 20 years ago. And uh, he had a, a bunch of different health problems at that time. He was diabetic. He was way overweight. And uh, he, like I said, he broke this code of Omerta, which the mob has. And uh, he started to help the feds out, I'll say, right after his conviction in 2004. Now, what he was convicted for in 2004 was basically, uh, you know, like this, this racketeering stuff. And all the crimes that were going on in the mob because you know the buck stops with the boss so we're talking murder racketeering other crimes he rose through the ranks to become you know the uh the head of this family and if you do that in the mafia you know, you're going to be guilty of a bunch of stuff so he had been given a life sentence he sent the stuff that he was sentenced for included the murder of three different other mobsters now these were not like on the same level that he eventually got to but they were captains okay and, and he'd also uh, been involved in the killing of a guy who had been involved with uh, with that guy, Joe Pistone. And Joe Pistone was the guy that they made the movie about Donnie Brasco. Okay, so Joe Pistone was like the, he was like the FBI's undercover agent with the mob back in the 1980s, if you guys have heard about that. So he had apparently been involved, I'm talking about Joe Messino now, had been involved in the killing of a guy who had like been involved with him. When he was convicted, he had to give up $7 million in cash and 250 gold bars, uh, and he had those gold bars in his house over in Howard Beach, Queens, and uh, he had been living there with his wife, they said, and three daughters. So he spent 12 years in prison, and after he spent 12 years in prison, even though he was, you know, supposed to do life, a federal judge in Brooklyn ruled in 2013 that uh, he could be released as a reward for cooperating with authorities and testifying against fellow gangsters. So typically they try to get the littler guys to snitch on the bigger guys, but this was a bigger guy who was snitching on like, you know, uh, other people, but you know, it is what it is. I mean, they got convictions out of it. So he'd also snitched on the guy who had succeeded him as the head of the Bonanno family. And this was a guy named uh, Vincent Bassiano. His nickname was Vinny Gorgas. I'm putting up a pic of him here. So apparently Messino had snitched on him too. They said Messino may be the most important cooperator, the judge said, in the modern history of law enforcement to pro prosecute the American mafia. And uh, that was what the judge said before releasing him. So like I said, he wasn't in good health and you can see the guy, I mean, he's, he was like way overweight, but uh, he went to the witness protection program. They gave him a new identity and uh, he was in Ohio 
what he was doing over there, I don't know. But uh, his lawyer was saying in argument for his early release uh, to the judge that Messino had he basically regretted what he what he had done going into the mob. He said, you know, he would have never gone into the mob if he had to do over again. And uh, so Messino was born and raised in Queens, and he went into the uh, like the criminal underworld in the 1970s. He got involved with a guy named Phil Rostelli, who uh, eventually became the boss of the Bonanno family. So he became, uh, I don't know if he be got made or if he just became an associate, but he kind of got joined up with them in 1977. And two years after that, he was a capo. In 1981, uh, this was the year that the big thing happened that he, uh, you know, eventually had to, had to reckon with in the courts because they said he helped facilitate the killings of three rival capos, Phil Giacconi, Alphonse Indelicato, and Dominic Trinchera. They were suspected of trying to overtake the Bonanno family. So anyways, those three guys got killed and uh, Massino was, you know, apparently implicated in that. Not as the guy who killed him personally, but facilitating it somehow. So he ended up serving time in the feds back in the 1980s. He eventually became the boss of the Bonanno family in 1991 when Rostelli died. And he was the boss of the family, as you guys know about the mafia. They don't just have illegal stuff. They got a lot of legal businesses too. So uh, in New York, Messino ran a lot of this stuff. He had a, a sandwich shop in Queens. He had catering companies. And he had an Italian restaurant, and uh, the Italians, shout out to them, man, they're big, like us uh, Greeks into the food business. That's a big thing for them, man. Uh, us, them, the Chinese, the Mexicans, uh, here in Chicago on the north side, the Jamaicans, a lot of other people, man, they're, they're our restaurant uh, rivals, but, you know, we, we got to respect for them too, man, because they do their thing in the restaurant business. Eventually, you know, succumb to whatever health problems he had. So 80 years old is pretty long, though. You know, that's pretty long. It's a lot longer than some of these guys made it. Although, I think Joey the Clown made it longer than that. So, yeah, some of these guys, they live to a ripe old age, man. But in the Code of Omerta, though, it, that totally wipes out, you know, as far as, like, the, the organized crime culture, any respect or stripes or anything that they had. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you tell one time, and it's like, you, you can't even call yourself you know, a gangster anymore from, from their perspective. That's like, it totally wipes that out. But see, what I see is that all the main guys now are doing this, you know, like, like a lot of the main guys are doing this. And uh, so either they're sneaking their own homies. And I'm not just talking about the mafia. I mean, gangs in general. Like I see this all, all over the place now, man. Like in every set, there's guys that just flip. And, and if they're not flipping to the law, they're sneaking each other in some other way. You know what I'm saying? Sleeping with their homie's girlfriend, other stuff like that. You know, this, this stuff is going on in like every gang, every mafia family, like all this stuff. There's so much snake stuff going on. So, uh, yeah, for all the kids thinking of getting involved in this stuff, man. Like I said in my video about the point when whites stopped gangbanging, a lot of the white gangbangers back in the day, they wanted to eventually make it to the level of organized crime. Um, but, you know, like I said, the ones that did that either ended up getting ratted on or ratted. So it was like, what was it all for? You know, all, all that time in the streets for nothing. So yeah, kids stay in them books, stay in them books, man. These dudes ain't really your brothers, you know what I'm saying? Because they'll throw you under the bus when, you know, this stuff really pops off. And I mean, with the law or with the ops. So anyways, man, rest in peace to Joe Messino, though, guys. Your boy, Chicago News. I'm out.